board. Good evening and welcome to the school board meeting on Tuesday, June 11th. Um, this will be our last formal meeting of the school year and we will adjourn after this meeting until um, late in August, which we will determine the date this evening. Um, if we would all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we do have a couple of adjustments to the agenda. Um, under recognition, we, uh, F should be recognition of Sue Steinman's service on the school board for the past three years. And um, after this meeting, we will have an executive session to discuss a personnel issue. Approval of the May school board minutes. Okay. I move that we approve the uh, May school board minutes as presented in our packet. Okay. Second. All those in favor? No. Have we ever done that before? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't think so. We, we used to. Old okay. Um, and tonight we do not have the high school and the middle school students. They were here for the last time um, last month. Um, under communications, first of all, uh, we'd like to welcome Ann Belden, who was officially sworn in as a school board member last evening by the town council. Um, and I think we'll just take a few minutes um, for the school board members to talk about um, and reflect on things that have happened in this past year and anything that they might want to mention. Who would like to start? <laughs> <laughs> <She's a prepared. laughs> Elaine? Okay, sure, I'll go. Um, last month I, I, I did forget so I want to start off this evening by thanking the community members who supported me during the elections last month. Um, I just want to say that my three years on the school board really did fly right by. And when my decision to run again was due, it was really the support that I had gotten from so many community members, fellow uh, school board members, teachers, and even students that helped me to realize that we were on the right path and that I really did want to be an active member of making sure that we stayed the course. Um, so I look forward to another three years and hope that the community will continue to support the work we all do as school board members. Uh, when I when reflect back on the past year, it brings to mind a very productive year. Uh, ongoing work on many of the Future Directions Committee seems to have come before us during this year. I feel it's very gratifying to see the work of, uh, in particular, Sarah Simmons and her team as they are showing progress in our curriculum development. I was very impressed with um, our most recent teacher workshop day last month. Um, I was able to attend what I thought looked like a teacher version of research night at Pond Cove or a science fair at a high school. Um, teachers had set up displays sharing their work on a variety of curriculum projects that they had used uh, their planning time for throughout the year. Uh, a lot of great work is being done. and. My only regret is that we weren't able to share it with all of our community members. Our, our students are experiencing what the teachers were showing us and many of the parents hear about it, but to actually see the amount of independent work that is being done is really quite impressive and, and I like just think that it really needs to be shared. Um, the teachers have a lot to be proud of and our community needs to be aware of the great work that they support with their tax dollars. I also wanted to comment that uh, this year seemed to be a, a year that we did a lot of updating and new policies were put on a timetable and we seem to be look, looking further out into what we're trying to accomplish. I particularly look forward to the final pieces of the hiring and evaluation that we received this month and our updated athletic policies, while controversial at times, have served us well as all parties are adjusting to the changes. I look forward to the August Future Directions Workshop when we're going to reconvene and uh, with teachers, community members, parents, and administration 
to look at where we are in our plans to make the adjustments necessary and to chart perhaps maybe another new course. Uh, we have a lot more work to do uh, than last time, but it should make the process and the outcome even more productive. As a finance chair, I think our budget woes have certainly provided us with challenges to prioritize while still moving forward. I feel that our administrators and the school board have done a great job with the cards that we have been dealt, but I really, really look forward to next year as a time to readjust our five-year plan to reflect something beyond the treading water that we seem to statement that we've had to use a lot for the past two years. The three years of hard work on the facility needs uh, may meet its greatest challenge this fall when we look to effectively communicate the facts to our citizens so they can support us on the referendum in November. We'll look at every avenue to make sure that every community member understands the issues at hand and I encourage everyone to read and ask questions and understand the extensive work that's been done by these committees so that they can make their own decision in November. And that's about how I saw this year and where I think we're going to be going next year, I hope. Okay, thank you, Elaine. Jennifer? Um, well, Elaine pretty much summed up the <laughs> last year. Um, one thing that I would like to comment on is um, uh, the teacher negotiations that we did this year. It was done a little bit differently. Um, and Tom had a good word for it, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. What did you call it? Collaborative bargaining. Collaborative bargaining. Um, <clears throat> and we spent um, a couple of full days uh, doing it rather than piecemeal of a couple hours after school every day. And uh, I think we came up with a good contract, and I think it went really smoothly and built a lot of trust and give and take. and. Um, I think that was one of the highlights for me this year. Um, just a few things. It would be easy to um, list a whole bunch of things that um, have been positive that, are, that have happened this year. Um, but uh, let me just recap some things that really stick out in my mind. Um, I think that this was another year of extraordinary um, student achievement. And um, it's, just, it's just so clear that um, things uh, that are good are happening here. And, um, and clearly, that's a tribute to the, the staff and the, the leadership um, in the district. Um, as we've witnessed month to month um, recognition of all sorts of student achievement in every area imaginable, um, and certainly most recently, for those of us who have gone through the senior celebrations, um, to just witness um, just extraordinary achievements on the part of uh, so many students. Um, secondly is really, again, and reiterating a little bit of what Elaine said, some terrific progress made on some very key district goals, particularly um, to be recognized, I think, is the work um, that our staff has done developing um, as they continue to develop local assessments um, and as they also work to align the curriculum uh, with Maine. Uh, learning results. Third, I would point to is um, this year uh, the laptop initiative, uh, the excitement about laptops, um, the excellent work that has been done to really integrate the use of technology um, into our instructional um, uh, methodology. And then last, um, as uh, I was the, um, I guess the chief negotiator on, I, I know, the teacher's um, contract. And, and I think it was just another cycle of very positive and very productive, respectful contract negotiations, um, which again is a clear indication to me um, and a sign and speaks very highly um, to the level of mutual respect, I think, that exists and the trust that's in place among um, all of our various stakeholders. OK, thank you. Um, Kathy. Thank you. Um, this has been a very interesting year for me. Uh, as a new member of the committee, I really did not have the proper perspective on the undertaking when I joined. Susan's laughing, but you just don't know when you start what you're getting into. And the thing that impresses me the most is the dedication and the professionalism 
and the willingness to spend whatever amount of time is necessary by the members of this board and others, it, it's astounding. And um, it's been a wonderful experience for me from that point of view. Uh, I was working on the policy committee with Susan, and she was a tremendous guide to all of us. And the work that we were able to accomplish and the use, the meaningful way that we used our time is really because of her commitment and dedication to the work. And the results are very obvious to all of us, what we've accomplished. And I thank you, Susan, for that um, uh, guidance. Like George, I also had a student graduating this year. And I looked at it from another perspective as a member of the school board and looking at these marvelous students, no matter what their future plans are, when you look at all of those kids and you listen to them and you hear their plans and the joy that they have in their voice for the experience that they've had here in Cape Elizabeth, it, it, it was just fabulous. And, and you, when you hear this, the awards that they've received and the accomplishments and not just academic accomplishments, but service accomplishment. I sat through the STP meeting um, review the other night. The work that our children did over those three periods, it's, it's incredible and it will change their lives. It will give them an added view of what life is like outside of Cape Elizabeth. So I, I would certainly plug for continuation of the STP. Um, as the looking forward, um, I'm looking forward to our buildings being improved significantly and dramatically. And all of us are willing to work towards that because here we have this incredible, dedicated faculty, bright, willing students, and we need to give them the space where they can have the programs delivered in the way that they should be delivered for their future. Finally, uh, if any of you had the opportunity to check the website that was uh, listed today, and I don't have the name of it, but uh, fortunately I was sent the um, address from uh, someone else in the system. There was a marvelous display of the work that our seventh graders have done in one year based on the work that they've done through laptops. Um, it was just incredible. Again, clear evidence of the work that has been accomplished in this nine months. So my thanks to the faculty and to the students and to the board. It's been interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and as, as far as um, I'm concerned, I initially thought that being the chair this year would be a smooth, easy job. After watching George deal with a number of difficult um, situations and controversies for the past four years. What could go wrong? We've already dealt with everything. Well, the past few months have been particularly difficult. But that shouldn't affect all of the good things um, that have happened during the course of the school year. And in, in my mind, there are numerous um, student achievements that we have recognized throughout the year in academics, in music, in theater, in athletics. We, um, we are ranked number 543, which is the top 4% of all American high schools based on the number of advanced placement tests taken by all students. Um, we're up there with some of the strongest AP programs in the country. And this goes with special thanks to Roger Rio um, in our math department at the high school um, because he's responsible for having our school added to that Newsweek list that was published just this week. Um, and today, several people have mentioned um, that we were featured in uh, a story on, we were a feature story on Intel's website for the laptop project that members of our seventh grade I team developed for the building projects. The seventh graders presented project build to the town council back in January of this year. The students used a combination of iMovies, PowerPoint, and digital photography to capture the essence of the high school renovation program and um, the addition to Pine Cove. Holly Smevog, a teacher at the middle school who worked with the students on this project, submitted this project to Intel and has received a digital microscope 
for the schools to use. So we are very proud of that. And, and if everyone, I hope everyone had gotten emails today um, asking them to check out the website. And I, I can give that website, it's only up for one day, it's only there today. So if you can, um, please look at it when you go home. It's www.97 dot intel dot com slash odyssey slash index dot asp and it's wonderful and they did a wonderful story on our kids um, anything else and oh, well I'd just like to say of course my reflections come from the other side of this imposing desk but I'd like to say that I'm really excited to be here I'm honored to be up here with this amazing group of people and I want to thank the people who supported me and my candidacy, many of whom are here tonight. And I'm looking forward to this next three years. Um, certainly do my best and I welcome anybody to communicate with me, contact me with any questions you might have. Not that I'll know the answers to them, but I will do my utmost to research them. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ann. Um, next, we will move on to comments from the public. Do we have any time? No. no. Then we will move on to recognition. And tonight, um, we have a list of people um, to recognize. Um, staff in our schools for their years of service, um, the parents' associations from each school, um, retiring faculty and staff, uh, the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, our visiting teacher in Pine Cove, uh, May, and um, Susan for her years of service on the school board. I'd like to start first. Um, each year at this time, we recognize uh, staff for years of service. And in our, at our August meeting, we will recognize those individuals with a small, small token of appreciation and what we do is we split those in five-year categories. So we do recognize staff for years of 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and beyond if we have them. Um, so usually at this time, we read the names off, but they will be recognized um, at our August meeting. Um, for five years of service, Karen Abbott, Janet Anberger, Conrad Berthume, Catherine Cornell, Betsy DeGroff, uh, Rennie Donovan, David Greeley, Deborah Jackson, Amy Kieran, Scott Labby, Stephen LaRose, Diane Reed, Christine Tweedy, Terry White, and Trina Richards. For 10 years of service, Fred Bayringer, Pat Dubois, Mary Dulac, Paula Harris, Mary Hart, Claudia Racky, Therese Roberts, Tammy Thatcher, and for 15 years of service, Janet Hoskins, uh, Barbara McLean, Julie Robbins, Nancy Scott, and Margaret Welch. For 20 years of service, Barbara Cummings, Randy Dill, Michael Efron, Michael Efron Ray Michaud, David Peary. 25 years of service, Marie Hayes, and for 30 years of service, Janice Small, and they will be recognized in August. We do have some other recognition and small gifts, um, uh, as Marie said, for, for some groups and individuals who uh, we feel have really contributed greatly to the school system, so we'll move down to the podium and do mm -hmm. that. Each uh, month, the school board attempts to do um, some sort of recognition, and oftentimes we recognize the, the jazz band, our national, national merit students, all kinds of groups. Um, and in, in looking at the end of the year, we often we recognize at this time our retiring teachers, school board members. But we also uh, thought that um, you know, we have some other groups out there that do an awful lot of work um, for our students and for our schools. Um, and although they, they don't ask for the recognition, uh, they raise a lot of, 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 just gives a lot of financial support.
in support of our programs. So we thought it would be appropriate to um, award a certificate that has a frame that can go up in the school for the different parent associations. Uh, not just for the work that's been done this year, but the work that's been done for many years in all of our schools by the, by the parent associations. And what I'd like to do is I'll read the certificate um, and then if those members who are representing that particular parent group would come up to, to receive uh, the award. And this one reads, uh, the Cape Elizabeth School Board presents this award for service and dedication to the High School Parents Association in recognition of the group's longtime volunteer service to the students of, of Cape Elizabeth High School. It is due in large part to your efforts and continual support of our schools that the high school is such a good place to learn. For the Cape Elizabeth School Board, Thomas Priscilla and Marie Prager. And I think Debbie Croft is here, and I don't know if anyone else is. They're all the tennis fans. That's the tennis fans. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very you. Good. And the next award is the same wording, except for this is for service and dedication to the Middle School Parents Association. And I think this evening we do have Representative Mary Ann yes. Tarazi is here. I don't know if anyone else in the middle school would come up. And I think we have a number of people from the from Pan Cove. Um, Pan Cove parent activities always draw a large crowd anyway. Um, <laughs> so representing the Pan Cove Parents Association, I know Trish Brigham is here, M.A. Watson and Diane Dickinson and Nancy McGlynn. Got all the names right. Would you please come up? All of you, come on up and accept this award. And again, as I look around the room and across the, the front of the room, uh, Many of you have all been involved for years with all the different parent groups, and um, I don't think we would be the same place without the work that we've, we've had done in all of our schools by, those, by the parent associations. The next award is, an, is, a, is a fairly new group, um, but a group that's just taken on an awful lot of energy. Um, and I guess I have a certain bias toward it because I was very involved with um, the initial stages, as was Elaine of the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation. But I think once this, it was, it was took a while to, to get rolling, but once this group started, there was no stopping. Um, they've awarded uh, two different grant cycles, uh, 15, 000, approximately $15,000 each time. Uh, they're making progress toward uh, putting together an endowment for the Cape Elizabeth schools. They're really focused on their mission of uh, supporting innovation and creativity in our schools. And so we also thought it would be a very good group to recognize the work that they've done. Um, I don't know if they have a particular place they'd want to hang this plaque. Maybe they can kind of just bring it with them as they go places. <laughs> 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 to raise funds, that is. <laughs> this one reads, the Cape Elizabeth School Board presents this certificate of appreciation to the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation in recognition of the support provided for the Cape Elizabeth Schools through the awarding of significant funds for teacher grants and the establishment of endowment that will continue to encourage innovation and creativity in our schools. For the Cape Elizabeth School Board, Thomas A. Frisella and Marie Prager. And I know we have uh, Andy Gohegan, uh, Gail Rice, and Doug Cranshaw, who are all very early members of this group. And <laughs> As you can see, don't even go away because we are going to take a break at the end of this, these awards. I'm just, uh, we have some punch and some cookies so we can kind of chat at the end. Um, tonight we are um, also honoring some retirees of which um, we have um, Andrew Lomack McNair who was here this evening, Betty Mullen and Sandy Burley were not able to make it. 
But we do have a gift for Andrew, who has, um, uh, speaking of negotiations, I, I spent some wonderful meetings with, with Andrew because he's always a very active member of the negotiating team. As I know the school board members um, uh, spent some, some real quality time working with Andrew in that endeavor and his work with the fifth grade um, at the middle school. Um, and I know he'll be sorely missed at that school because he is someone who is very enthusiastic about what he does. But the school board does have a, a, a gift or a token that we'd like to present to Andrew this evening for his service to the school district. I wanted to take a minute to say over the past two years, I've learned more than I probably have in any other two years of my life. I've come to understand what the word compassion means, and <clears throat> I've understood, I think, over the last two years, the compassionate nature of this community. It's an incredible group of people that I will truly miss. Um, I will miss the community, the administrators I've worked with, the staff members I call my friends. Most of all, I'm going to miss the children. Um, I have always said that I didn't want to go into a classroom and teach a class. I wanted to work with 21 individual psyches. And this year, I have really managed to do that. <laughs> Thank you all very much. This year, we were very fortunate to have um, a visitor um, who stayed with us throughout the year and really added an awful lot, not only for, for, for teachers in working with her, um, but for, um, for, for our students as well. So we do have a certificate um, to award to uh, May, um, and I think the pronunciation is Wu Shumei for her outstanding achievement in educating the staff and students of Cape Elizabeth schools in the Chinese customs and culture. And I believe May has a few words she'd like to say also. So May, would you please come up? First of all, I want to say thank you Oh, very much. I'm very lucky and very happy to be hosted by the wonderful community. And I am staying with Embedded, and I stayed with this family the longest time. I'm so lucky. I, I came to America since last August. I, stayed, I have stayed here almost one year. I think I have wonderful experience in America. It's, besides the wonderful families, I have another additional family, my lunch buddies. <laughs> Actually, I just came back from the party. My mentor, Shari Robinson, is adorable. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think she is, takes care of me just like mine. <laughs> very, very nice. Uh, I think good memories are very hard to put in my suitcase but the good memories are very easy for me to carry back to China. I think Cape Elizabeth's community is wonderful with so many very dedicated teachers and so many supportive parents and so many nice kids. I think Cape Elizabeth's education will get better and better. Thank you all. And our last uh, presentation um, is for a uh, school board member who has served um, on the board for the last three years. And you've heard several um, board members um, mention her work on the policy committee, and that's just a, a piece of what Susan added to the school board. Uh, she always asks very challenging questions, uh, kept us on, on track, and is an extremely organized individual. Um, so. 
I think it's, is it Jenna or Kathy will be following in her steps as the policy chair. Um, but she's done a wonderful job and, and really got us through an awful lot because that's really a big piece of what this school board is all about and that's setting the policies by, by which we work. Um, but she's been a great member and um, we're sorry to, to see her leave. Um, but it's been just great for me personally to have worked with Susan for the past three years on the school board. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbyes are never easy, but for me they seem even more difficult when A, I love what we're doing together, and B, I don't feel quite ready to leave, but leave I must. As you all know, it is not because I don't love the work, or don't like the politics, or because of the time commitment but then that I need to concentrate my energy on other things. My past three years in the school board have exceeded my expectations in virtually every way. I can honestly say that I have never had the pleasure of working with a finer group of individuals. I have always been passionate about education. This position offered me the opportunity to work collaboratively with others who share that passion. First administrator of the district leadership team, I continue to be impressed by your abilities, by your professionalism, and by your knowledge of and passion for teaching and learning. This town has been extremely fortunate to have attracted some of the brightest and the best in the field of education, and I am grateful to have had the privilege of working alongside you. I would like to publicly thank Mary Bruns for her willingness to help me in any way that I have asked, bar none. She was always a bright spot of my day, sometimes when one was badly needed, and I'll miss her smile and gentle ways. And thank you, Pauline, whose knowledge, grace, and dignity were invaluable in our budget process and during our most difficult, difficult financial challenges. Tom Priscilla, we have been so fortunate to have you at the helm of our school community these past four years. You began by helping us set a direction, by mending broken fences of mistrust and skepticism on part of our staff, you helped to implement processes where none existed. You challenged us to do things we said we should do, but weren't. You introduced or reintroduced the concepts of learning communities, <coughs> goal setting, continuous improvement, professional development, professional development, measuring what we value, and accountability. You have demonstrated the courage to do the right thing, not the popular thing, and have modeled that it doesn't matter what we say we stand for if we don't stand up for it. For many years to come, the impact of your presence will be felt throughout our community. And finally, members of the board, I have been humbled by the experience of serving with you all. At times as a group, we have been criticized for not having had more disagreements and more dissension. We have very different personalities, work process, and communication style. However, when a group of individuals are united with a common purpose, shared values in a clear vision, disagreements can be few. I continue to be impressed by each of you. I don't think we could have planned to bring together a more diverse set of skills, and yet, as we sat down as a group to explore issues, each person articulating a different perspective or insight, eventually we became more and more clear of what was the right thing to do. The process worked every time. I think the reason it did work was because when the fog lifted or the dust settled, we were clear, again, that what really mattered was how would our decision affect the kids. I will miss you all and this work that we do very much. Thank you. And we're going to take a few minutes, about a 10, 15 minute break, uh, have some cookies and punch, and um, then we'll go on with our meeting.
could have stayed down there for a while. <laughs> Everything gets so quiet. Now we're back to the superintendent's report. Tom? Um, a few items, uh, just to up, a few updates. Uh, future direction planning, as, as you know, um, we are planning a, a, a major event on August 26th. That will be our first day back for all staff. Um, we will be meeting at Varillo's, and that will be an opportunity for the staff, invited community members, uh, parents, uh, we'll have student representatives uh, to take a look at our future direction plan, um, review some data, and then the future direction planning committee will take a look at all of that information and s just to see what revisions are needed um, in that plan and, and push it out for another five years. The Education Foundation, I shared with you already uh, some of the things that are on tap for that group. They're also um, looking at creating their own strategic plan for, for their long term. And this fall, um, they will be initiating hopefully a capital campaign um, to, hope re to help begin to reach their, their goal of a, a $1 million to $2 million endowment for the schools. And lastly, um, you have in your packet a copy of the supervision and evaluation plan. Um, this is something at this point we'd like, like you to, to, to take a look at. I know there are, uh, will be many questions, but I think as we plan our summer workshop, it might be a good topic for us to discuss, um, among other things, at our, at our summer workshop. I did want to give you a preview of that. I um, would also like to thank um, that committee, specifically Nancy Hutton, and Jeff Shedd, who spent numerous hours working on this particular plan. Um, Susan Steinman was also a member of that committee. Um, Shari Robinson, I think, was on that committee, and several, several other teachers representing all of the schools. But it's an important document, so I, I do want to give it the time it deserves, so I think it would be a good topic um, for one of our, our, our summer workshops. And we can talk a little bit about how we can best, best do that. Um, but a lot of effort and a lot of energy went into to creating that, doc that particular document. Okay, thank you. Now we can move on to the principal's reports. And we have a special guest principal from Pine Cove. Thank you. Um, my name is Tom, and I'd like to say some announcement. Things I did today, well, I, I changed some of the rules. We could wear hats in school, chew gum, no homework, and extra recess for everyone about 40 minutes. Wow. <laughs> I got to visit first, second grade, third, and fourth grade. I made some announcements and, and bus dismissals. I did not have to do any paperwork. Some of the good things. <laughs> <laughs> no fighting or food fights at lunchtime. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? He's technically on duty till midnight. <laughs> <laughs> you have any questions? Tom, who did the paperwork? Who did the paperwork? Uh, mostly Mr. Melito and Mr. Asmeyer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tom, where did you get that bow tie? Oh, uh, my mom got it. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, what was the, your favorite part about being principal of the um, day? The, um, visiting the classrooms. Cool. It's fun to see other kids and other teachers, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Okay, thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> well, 
you know why I use Yellow Stay Up Late. There's no homework. <laughs> it, it, Tom did a great job. It's really, and when kids were leaving, they were all saying goodnight to him. Um, nobody wants to ask him if $10 a day is enough salary, the way you <laughs> Thanks, Tom, and thanks, Mom, for bringing him. Um, it wouldn't be fair to ask Tom to do the year in review since he was only on for a day. But um, just quickly, since we've had a little bit of air time, I want to add my uh, thanks to uh, the Beldins and to May and the Allied Arts team for making that teacher exchange such a pleasure and such an educational experience for everyone. We may be able to get another teacher next year. It's just terrific and one of the highlights of the year. Um, all the way back to September. In my view, September kind of started semi-miraculously because the new playground appeared. I had given up over the years of seeing this project come to fruition, but thanks to the, the financial support and the moral support of the town council and the playground group and then the fundraising abilities of Cape Play, the um, playground became reality and it's used, uh, as far as I can see, day and night. It's, it's been a terrific project. Um, because of the school board's commitment to making staff development a part of professional life here, including adding flex time to the teacher's options, we seem to start this year with just a lot of momentum. We, were, we didn't solicit that support in the fall from Tom Frisella to, to compliment us about our achievements in reading, but we really appreciated hearing about that publicly. And it reminded me that uh, something I almost take for granted, that uh, Pond Cove teachers really believe in school improvement and they have the courage and the ability to say that we can get better at things and they go ahead and do it. And that's been another theme of the year. Our working theme for the year was working together. We had a lot of things to do uh, to accomplish with our various projects and one of the most important ones, I hope that one we can continue that really emphasizes working together is lesson study. We used a lot of our time and energy to get that going throughout the school and I think as we look at teacher leadership and professional development ideas, uh, an idea like lesson study, which, gets, which reduces isolation for both teachers and administrators, gets people working together, looking at students' reactions to lessons, doing assessment, I think is a very powerful tool we've developed there. None of this could happen, we've talked a lot about climate, none of these uh, achievements could happen without a very positive climate at Pond Cove, not just among the teachers, but with the parent community whom you've already thanked tonight. So between the uh, positive climate and the uh, incentive to get things done, I think we've had another great year. Questions? No questions. Answers? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay, thank you, Tom. <clears throat> um, the high school, Jeff. Um, highlights, highlights from this year. Um, First of all, this was the first year of the reorganized science curriculum. Um, and overall, I think the science teachers rate the, the year as a, as a real strong success. They learned some things, they did some things right, and they did some things wrong. Uh, but I think on balance, they did a lot of things right. The culmination of the year was um, a week ago, I think, so or so, when they, when, uh, they went to Funtown for physics day at Funtown. Um, now, most schools continue to have physics in the 12th grade. So when Funtown organizes these physics days, they're used to having 12, 15 kids come from each school and the top seniors come from each school and that kind of thing. Um, so Cape Elizabeth was, was by far the largest um, group represented at Funtown with three busloads of kids. Um, ninth graders um, carrying around uh, all kinds of scientific equipment and that sort of stuff, which I understand was used sort of sporadically, not entirely keeping with the assignments that the kids were given, uh, but it was a fun time and they did do, they did do a lot of uh, measuring and data analysis as well, but I think it was largely a fun time that happened at fun time. Um, so that, that was good. Um, and I still would love to have the board at some point when there's time in the workshop schedule if you have an interest to sort of hear from the science teachers from their perspective about that. Um, I want to thank the, bo the board for uh, the addition of the study hall monitors that we did have this year and will continue to have next year. It made a huge difference in terms of teachers being able to make some real progress in developing the common assessment system. English and math is comfortable, are comfortable that they are in a good position. It's not 100% done, but the major pieces of it are done. Um, there will no doubt be some revisions next year as things are actually implemented. 
uh, score in common and those sorts of things. But they've accomplished a tremendous amount, which would not have been possible but for the addition of those study hall monitors and the common planning time that happened as a result. Um, we have also been working this year because next year's ninth graders are the first class that will be facing the learning results as a requirement for graduation. And there have been some very specific um, uh, changes that we've been working on um, that we've been unveiling sort of uh, to parents, to the community, and today to kids uh, around learning results and the appropriate support that we have to have in place to try to make it possible for kids to succeed. Uh, one of those results, uh, one of those efforts is what we're calling Math Workshop, which is uh, we sent out uh, several weeks ago letters to 25 to 30 parents, I'm not sure of the exact number, um, based on uh, the collaborative work of two of our teachers, Elaine Brownell and Charlotte Hanna, and the two math teachers at the middle school, Steve Price and Mary Murphy, um, who've really put together some things looking at data to try to figure out who are the kids who might need some additional help. And so um, we did send out letters to 25 to 30 parents encouraging them to allow us to put uh, an additional math course um, into their students program for the, either the entirety of next year or uh, the second semester of next year. And I'm pleased to report that all the parents have been very, very supportive of that. Some people have just said very reasonably I want my child to be on sort of monitor for the first semester, and then we'll see if it's really necessary for, this, for the second semester, which is a perfectly appropriate response, and we're glad to do it that way. But the math workshop will be following using the uh, accelerated math program that, uh, that allows, has allowed Charlotte this year uh, to very much individualize um, the work that she's been doing with kids in her tutorial uh, program. So that's been very, very, that's a big change. It's a huge change. Um, and it's a very practical sort of ground level change that has a, is going to affect kids and parents next year um, as they begin to be confronted with the learning results. Next year we're also going to be putting in place a, um, a study skills program uh, in response again to learning results in the sense that we need to provide the additional supports to kids. We've received a significant amount of feedback from uh, parents and also from this year's ninth graders that um, the lack of a sort of systematic approach to trying to instruct students in study skills and actually get them to apply those study skills in their content area classes is a hole that we need to try to fill. Um, I can share, I don't have time to sort of share the details of that right now, but the program is called Focus 9, um, and it's not going to involve an everyday um, study skills instruction, but it will, involve, it will provide, expose all kids to some basic study skills, and for those who need more assistance, it will provide more intensive assistance. And the key, to what we're trying to do um, and, the, and the key to, 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 to what I hope will be the program of success is that uh, the folks who are doing the study skills instruction are going to be very much in contact with the content area teachers, the math teachers, science teachers, history teachers, English teachers, as kids are exposed to various study skills so that those skills can be very specifically and ex explicitly uh, applied and reinforced in the content area classes because otherwise study skills are just sort of this abstract thing. Uh, so that's going to be put in place. Um, I believe we're going to have in place next year, again, related to learning results, um, made possible by study hall monitor uh, additions, uh, is an after school homework support uh, for students so that students who are inconsistent in completing their homework and have a place to go after school in an organized way, in a structured way to make sure they get their homework done. Um, those are sort of learning results related things that we've done, the common assessments and then the support things, what the pieces that we're planning to put in place for next year. Uh, this was our first year to have two 10 laptop mobile labs, uh, which were very heavily utilized. Um, not quite entirely in the way that we expected or I expected at the beginning of the year, but that the staff found some very creative ways to put those mobile apps to use, and they've been, I think, very, very successful. Um, this year we put into place um, a, what we're calling a CAPE assistance team. Uh, Pine Cove and the middle school have both had sort of uh, teams in place for the last several years to sort of uh, identify kids early on who are struggling and to try to put solutions into place for those kids. Uh, so they, before they dig too much of a hole for themselves. Today was, a, this year was a pilot year. We made some progress and made some impact with kids and we were really beginning to hit our stride towards the end of the year in terms of being able to really identify the, the various tools that we can utilize to help kids out. And I'm excited about next year being a year that we can really, really uh, make a difference for even more kids. Um, 
Next year is our year of self-study for our accreditation process. Um, we'll be getting that process with NIESC, our, the New England Association of Schools and Colleges. Um, I'm thankful that Angela Schapani, one of our foreign language teachers, has agreed to be the head of the steering committee. Um, she's organized, uh, she's gung-ho. Sarah Simmons is not happy with me about taking her away from some of her curriculum and instruction committees uh, that she's been working on with Sarah. But she's going to be, I think she's going to do an absolutely outstanding job in her role as steering committee chair. Uh, we have been named 543rd of the best schools in America. That is not with, without some controversy within the high school. Uh, uh, some people question um, whether the measure that Jay Matthews, who's the reporter for the Washington Post and Newsweek, uh, who put that list together used in order to sort of figure out what the best schools in America were. Um, basically what he does is he says, I'm going to, he, t t he creates this formula, uh, says how many kids actually took advanced placement or international baccalaureate exams, that number divided by the numbers of seniors in a class. Um, and his intent is that, that that should give a measure of, a rough measure at least, of how deeply into a class, the most challenging academic um, uh, curricula um, uh, reach, um, so that they're not just getting the sort of the top 5%, 6% or whatever, but they're reaching more deeply within the class. Jay Matthews is actually a guy uh, who wrote um, the book, The Best Teacher in America, which is a biography of Jamie Escalante, uh, the hero of the movie Stand and Deliver, if you remember that, who taught AP calculus to a, a whole lot of Hispanic students in Los Angeles. And so his intent is to, uh, Matthew's intent is to sort of acknowledge schools who provide really rigorous academic opportunities to, to not just the very, very, very top. Um, and Roger Rio, who did call Jay Matthews and sort of got us on the list when we were originally left off, we are the only school in Maine that's on the list, by the way, at this point. Um, has actually done a statistical study. He gave, put the graph on my desk today because there has been some controversy about whether or not the schools that are represented are all the uh, uh, high socioeconomic suburban schools. And today, Roger put on a scattergram on my desk which shows that, in fact, there is no correlation whatsoever between uh, the percentage of kids on free and reduced lunch and where those schools stand on, the, uh, on the, uh, that, that measure of, of excellence, essentially. So that's kind of neat, and it will, uh, it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice feather in the cap. Um, one thing that's obviously huge for the high school is the work of the building committee. Um, I'm excited that whatever form it eventually takes, whatever dollar figure is eventually uh, put before the town, that there will be a dollar figure uh, that will hopefully contribute to the renovation of the high school. It's much needed. I do want to thank the Parents Association for all their support this year, the grants that they've given, uh, and, and uh, all this, I mean, just tremendous support, um, the food that they serve. Um, and all the, all the things that they do for us. I told Andy Gohegan before I left that, the, that, that um, as I mentioned, uh, the work of the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, really the seed money that they provided to allow Charlotte Hanna to do the work that she's been doing with Accelerated Math will be mushrooming next year because of the success that she's had into sort of a, a significant initiative. And it, it sort of solved the problem for us of what does this support look like, at least in, in the area of math. Uh, and hopefully it will be as successful with those groups of students as Charlotte has had with the groups of students that she deals with. Um, the past two weeks, I'm not going to go into any details about any of these, but if anybody has any questions about it, the past two weeks we've had STP. STP ending, awards night, senior celebration, senior faculty send off. I will mention that there was an outstanding rap uh, performance by Wynn Phillips and, and Joel Schroeder, um, sort of reminiscing uh, in a rap format. Um, wasn't to be missed. I wish it had been on uh, videotape as well. We're seeing. We've had graduation, and today we had step up day. So that was, that was an action packed sort of few weeks. Um, the new school board representatives, by the way, are Rebecca Taylor and Michael Iris. Uh, they were just elected, so you'll be seeing them come September. Um, I just want to mention quickly, highlight some unmet needs. Um, our guidance counselors are going to be really strapped next year, um, and so that, that's a real significant thing. NIESC process is going to take us a significant amount of time um, developing and working with the potential of the CAPE assistance team to really act as an early identification and response system, I think is very exciting. Um, 
We still have, with respect to learning results, a lot of sort of logistical questions that we have to answer, and we'll be doing a lot of work over the summer to talk about how do report cards get changed, and reporting to parents, and all kinds of things. Um, and just sort of a red flag about we do have significant increases in student loans this year, particularly in uh, particularly in math and social studies and English. Um, it's, it's really quite a significant thing. Overall, very, very positive. Lots of thanks. Lots of uh, kudos to a lot of folks. And if anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy? Good evening. Well, first to celebrate a couple of things that um, have already been mentioned here tonight. First of all, we would be remiss if we didn't celebrate all the years that Betty Mullen worked with us and helped us with our special education programming. She has been able to be with us uh, much of this school year because of health, but we certainly treasure all the years she spent with us and our working relationship with her and wish her good luck in her next adventure as she finds time to spend with her grandchildren. And also to celebrate the time that we had a chance to work with Andrew Lomat McNear. This is a relatively recent decision that he's had to come to. I know it wasn't easy for him, but it appears to be the right decision for him at this time. Back in 1990, in that summer, I was working as the assistant principal of Pond Cove, and one of the tasks we did, we had this wonderful opportunity to interview all these people who would be applying for jobs. And I was going along my merry way, and lo and behold, one of the people we interviewed in June was Andrew Lomat McNair. And I still remember the wonderful math lesson that he brought with him to show us um, and to do and to demonstrate for us. And I thought, this is really going to be great to work with this man. Well, later on that summer, um, my predecessor, Chris Toy, called me and said, Nancy, I've got a great opportunity you should look into. And it was about applying to become the principal of the Cape Elizabeth Middle School which I did, and I was successful, and, and that was a great adventure too, but it meant Andrew and I sort of worked together, but never in the way that we thought back in that June day in 1990. So several years ago, when he took the opportunity to come over to the middle school, we both laughed, looked at each other, big smile, and said, aha, now the other adventure begins, and we get to work together. So it has truly been a pleasure to work with him. Um, we will miss him, and that is also another relationship that we will treasure forever. So. We wish him good luck. This year also to celebrate um, our long tradition and working with the DARE program. Um, we know that program will not be continuing, but that doesn't erase all the great things that we learned with DARE. We've worked um, with two fantastic officers, actually three um, all together that I remember, Donald Tubbs, Chris Carson, and Paul Gaspar. They all brought to our school a tremendous energy knowledge and a great way to relate to our young people. In celebration of that one program may end, but does that mean that the need or the connection needs to end? We've already had two meetings of a parent um, organization group with teachers and with Paul Gasper there, so kind of the question of what do we do now that we don't have DARE. So I know we'll go on and that relationship and working partnership will continue so that we will have access to all of that information and we certainly celebrate that. It's a great way to look at. You don't always have to solve it the same way, kind of thing. Our students um, continue to impress me. It's great to watch the way they came together for our play this year, which was, of course, written by our local talent of Susan Yokobaskis, um, Hillary Egan, and Steve Price, who, after working together on many plays, said, well, you know what? We're ready to do something a little bit different. And it was a middle school musical. We've already received one inquiry through the internet about um, rights to our play and how did we ever come about writing something like that. And they had read about it from our website, um, kinds of things. So that was interesting to do that. So it may never make Broadway, but we had a tremendous amount of fun doing it. And we look forward. Next year, we'll be back more in the cycle of doing a, a title of a play that perhaps you've heard of before. Our concerts, it's always great. I always like to go to Terry White's room in the fifth grade. I, he always kids me because I don't stay long when those fifth graders first get those instruments. Um, and I always tell Terry, I think it's a great, you know, fundraising thing. We could do Advil, Aleve, Excedrin commercials right from there. But then to watch how they grow and they get to their concert in the spring, how they improve for the sixth grade, the seventh grade, and the eighth grade is a marvelous thing. And it's wonderful to watch them and to see that growth. It's very visible and it is a public performance and they do their best work. And they have a good time while they're doing that. 
you see that same growth in our choruses as well too as they take on more challenging pieces to sing with more parts. So that's always a great thing to celebrate. We of course love working with our parents. When you work in a middle school, oftentimes when people say, well, where do you work? What grade level? And I say, oh, middle school. They kind of look at you with this glaze comes over their face and they say, oh. And I think sometimes those are difficult years for people. We understand that. We appreciate that the parents hang in there with us and stay and work with us as well, too. And we have a wonderful parents association. We have a lot of people who can come to our meetings, but many people who can't. And they volunteer in many other wonderful ways and connect with the students. And that's so important at this age not to step away from them. Even though they may be telling you publicly, please don't come, they're also saying, boy, I hope they're there. Are my parents out there? I hope they're here. And they really do want people around. So it's great to continue that. One of the great things for me this year is in the winter, especially um, because our math meets tend to occur more in the winter months and in May, is I'd be there working late at school and our math teams would be out. And you could hear our fifth and sixth grade math team when they landed at the door. They were so, they're not, there are not many of them, but you would think by the sound that there were many of them, probably about, I'm going to say, eight to 10 students, but you might think there were more. They are so excited. They race up, they show me what they've done or tell me what they've done. They have been very successful this year, but it isn't always about where they placed in the meet. It's about going there and hanging out with other people who do math things. And they're so excited to share that and to feel very good about that. In fact, this year, both of our math teams, both at the seventh and eighth grade level and the fifth and sixth grade level did a good job. And sometimes that's sort of the quiet team in our building. So it's nice to see all that energy. A couple weeks ago, went to the Augusta Civic Center and celebrated with two of our eighth graders being selected as our scholar leaders for this year. And this is a long-term partnership, I think I've told you about before, with the New England League of Middle Schools, the main association of middle-level educators. And we give an award to middle school students who show leadership. And oftentimes, they are leaders who are those quiet, strong, determined leaders who may not always be out in the front of every committee, but they're on every committee and they help get everything done. They bring things together. And you can tell that the students have a great deal of respect for them. For the years that we've been doing this, the people are always selected by the eighth grade teachers. And this year we attended that event with Daley Gruen and Elise Maloney. And Elise has been here each month sharing with you and recognized as scholar leaders. And that was a great thing to celebrate. Of course, one of the things about our whole year has been the laptops. People will get tired of hearing about the laptops long before we'll get tired of using them. And that's okay. One of the things something like the laptops does for school is it cause, it's a catalyst that causes you to look at everything you do. And even though you may re be reviewing that math curriculum again, that science lesson, the social studies research or whatever, it comes with an energy and an excitement because it's not, oh, I guess we've got to meet those standards or we've got to do this. That can sometimes happen to us. It's always great if you have a cell phone too, that's good. Um, <laughs> but we don't have those on our laptops. But um, <laughs> it's a connected piece of technology. Um, so it actually fit into the speech. Um, but the laptops have really helped us to look at the way we do everything, what kind of lessons we prepare, what kind of projects we accept. We're still learning all of that. It's still a journey. We haven't arrived anywhere. Um, it's great. Our students are beginning to tell us now, you know, I really, I'm so bored with PowerPoint. You know, that's great because then we can look at other ways to do things. It also helps us at some point to get back to sometimes the best way to do it is to look it up in a book and to do that. And that's a powerful thing. So having all of that around in our building is just an energizing effect and factor. Steve Price was in my office the other day and he's already got all these plans that he's going to work on his laptop this summer as he gets ready for eighth grade science next year. Of course, having the George Lucas people there last week was also very exciting because these were like the professional filmmakers. And Seymour Papert, who is an internationally known author on the use of technology and how to use that in schools and to change schools, um, happened to drop by. 
um, and it was great. A, a couple of our students thought he was George Lucas, um, who they knew. They didn't know Seymour Papert, but that was okay. Um, that was all right with Mr. Papert as well, too. And for many of our people who work with the laptops, they, of course, knew who Seymour Papert was, and it was a great honor that he happened to drop into our school to visit. And he's a wonderful gentleman. And I was walking him down the hall. I said, well, I'll make sure you get in the right place. He said, well, you know, if I don't, I'm pretty sure I'll have a good day anyway. So he seemed to be the perfect visitor for a middle school. Winning the grant that Marie already mentioned um, that Holly Smivog did is going to be great because we'll find out how to use a digital microscope. We're not quite sure how to do all of that yet, but we'll learn and we'll find out um, how to do that. And also, I think for the board and thanking Marie greatly for when there was a project to be done and thinking and just by watching her son work on a different project for a class, getting an idea of maybe there's something that the seventh graders could do with those iBooks to help us with the building project. And to look at middle school students as a resource for the community is a tremendous compliment to us and to those learners because oftentimes emerging adolescents are not looked upon as resources. And it was wonderful that they had that opportunity and they were so excited about that. Those types of things are things that we might be able to work with you on in the future. And they, they're great. They learned a tremendous amount about it. I know Marie mentioned the website, and this is when you go there. You get a chance to go there today before it goes off. This is what it looks like, and it's very nice. And when I saw this, I had another vision because Beverly and Gary and I have talked about this, that one of the things we want to have accomplished next year is you hear us talk about the laptops. We would like one of the workshops to be for a portion of it where you come to Sarah Simmons' room and we have members of our I-team there and they show you each be your one-on-one -on -one tutor or group of tutors and take you on a journey with some of the things that they're doing with their laptops. Because having a laptop in front of you and working with it yourself is one of the tremendous things that you'll find that really empowers these learners. So we hope to be able to work that into your schedule next year. And then we'll have an article about you. Maybe not in this particular publication, but on some publication, we'll make sure that it gets done. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Next, we can move on to committee reports. Um, and our finance subcommittee, um, actually, Elaine has remained the chair for this upcoming year. Um, we met prior to this evening's meeting, um, signed warrants. Uh, there was a report on the usage of uh, facilities, and it was approved that we would use the building rental revenues for additional custodial help for this summer. Um, we also discussed uh, uh, salaries and benefits on the non-classified employees, and there was the appropriations report to review. Okay, thank you, Elaine. And replacing Sue Steinman will be Kathy Walsh um, on the policy subcommittee. And we chose not to meet this month, so the work that we'll do is the next thing on the agenda. Okay. Then we can move on to unfinished business, and we have a number of policies that are consideration for um, second reading. Okay. Um, at our previous meeting, we did our first reading, so I hope that you will <coughs> vote to approve these. I'd just like to list them as they are on the agenda. Do I need to call the letters before or just, because that's really where it's filed. It's more the, the title? Yeah. Okay. Um, the pest management in school facilities and on school grounds, the professional hiring, uh, staff hiring, personnel goals, recruiting and hiring of administrative staff, Procedures for recruiting and hiring of administrative staff, the hiring procedures handbook, the teacher job share policy, and the athletic policy as it relates to evaluation of coaches. Do we, do we take a motion to? If you want to do them as a group or you can do them separately. What kind of questions? Okay. Questions? I had a question. Um, on the professional staff hiring, the, the, the page that was in our packet, it differs somewhat from what is in the hiring procedures book that we have. The first page? Yeah. Um, item number C mm -hmm. reads, 
in the booklet it reads advertising positions shall be over the largest appropriate geographical area and that is as it reads in in our file then in the book it says unless approved otherwise by the superintendent advertising professional positions will be at a minimum in area newspapers websites and in house that sentence is left out of what we are approving this evening yeah and that might have been because when I'm back the policy committee after the last school board meeting there was a change and, and it may not have I don't know which one it was changed in um, so that particular sentence unless approved otherwise yeah it, it, I, I believe that what we're having our packet makes it um, acceptable without approval from the superintendent that we could simply just post in-house for all positions. Yeah, I think we added that sentence and it, it was in here and never, it's supposed to be in bulk, I think. So that it, the sentence as it stands in our... Should be in the policy. Should be in this because policy. Because what's in this book, this, this overview, should be the, exactly the same as the policy. The only thing this doesn't have is the lettering, so they shouldn't, they should, they shouldn't be different. So that sentence should be in bulk. It, sh it should be in both. Okay. I just didn't want it. I wanted to know what we were. Yeah, I know there was some dialogue about that and it was changed, and I just don't think it'd be. One was printed before the other. Um, so, but that sentence should remain. It, it will remain in there. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Comments? You need a motion. I'm sorry? That you need a motion? Yes. Do we have a motion to accept these um, policies for second reading? Sure. Jennifer? I move we accept the policies as read by uh, Kathy Walsh. Um, that we, was <laughs> I move that we accept the policies for second reading. Thank you. Second. Second, second Ann. All in favor? Six zero. Okay, then we can move on to new business. Um, consideration of the superintendent's nominations for teaching positions. The number of uh, teaching positions um, that I would like to bring before the board. Um, the first is uh, candidate uh, Carrie Ann Aponovich. Uh, for a full-time social studies position at the high school. Okay, do we have a motion to accept this nomination? Blaine? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation for the hiring of this position. Second? Kathy? All in favor? Six, zero. The next is Jonathan Whitehead. Uh, also a position at the high school, which is a combination of science and mathematics, full-time position. Okay. Do we have a nomination? I move that we uh, accept the nomination of Jonathan Whitehead for the physics position at the high school. Okay, and a second. George, all those in favor? Six, zero. And also at the high school, Karen Lamb for a and for an English position. Okay, do we have a motion for Karen? I move that we accept the nomination of Karen Lamb for the high school English position. Second. George. All those in favor? Six, zero. And also at the high school, Erica Kent, and this is a, an English position. Uh, it does say anticipated, but we were waiting for um, some last minute um, whether or not a pers this position was going to be um, open and it has become open. So the word anticipated is under the subject, but it is a full-time English position at the high school. And that's Erica Kent. I move that we accept the superintendent's nomination of Erica Kent for the high school position. Okay, second. Elaine, all those in favor? Six, zero. And next we have a grade one position uh, and the person being nominated is Linda Sigmund. Motion. 
dr. lane i move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation for the hiring of linda sigmon okay second kathy um all those in favor six zero okay that's it okay next on our list is the superintendent's nomination of a teacher for a second year probationary contract if you remember at our last meeting the probationary teachers came came forward for your approval we neglected sally tamaro who does teach a class for us in the in the computer lab and this will be her second year of doing that so i would like to nominate sally tamaro as a as a second year probationary contract okay do we have a motion i move that we accept the nomination of sally tamaro to a second year probationary contract okay in a second jennifer all those in favor six zero next item um our athletic fee positions if you remember according to our new athletic policies um the fall coaching positions are to come at this meeting rather than in the past we waited until august when the seasons were probably already already begun so the winter coaches will be brought to you in the early fall and the spring coaches in the winter so we're a little bit ahead of the schedule in case something doesn't work out with any of these coaches we have time to to find another person so the following individuals are fall coaching positions andy strout varsity boys soccer ben raymond jv boys soccer don burke freshman boys soccer charlie carroll varsity girls soccer mark tinkham varsity girls assistant lori broadhurst varsity field hockey paul jackson golf david weatherby boys cross country mary ann doss girls cross country and mickey maher uh football okay do we have a motion to accept these recommendations i move that we accept the superintendent's recommendations to the athletic positions as read okay thank you second kathy all those in favor can i ask a question yes um in freshman boys soccer there are hours and levels do we pay for freshman soccer coaches um freshman programs no we don't pay for the freshman program but that's where that person would be as far as the, the levels are concerned okay. but we know we don't pay for that and the football also presently still being paid by the boosters right but they he has a zero there right that one didn't start. yeah curious okay we have a motion in a second all those in favor six zero um co-curricular fee i won't uh um, go through the reading of the list there are a number of co-curricular fee uh positions at pond cove um middle school high school um, and system-wide positions uh, you also have um, um, all of the the music positions and the different clubs and organizations um, and uh, the stipend positions are all included in in this handout um, so i would hoping that you've had the opportunity to go through them i recommend the the co-curricular positions as presented we have a move i move that we accept the co-curricular positions as presented by the superintendent okay second jennifer questions comments okay all those in favor six zero okay next is the consideration um for approval of the negotiated benefits uh, amendment to the bus drivers custodians and the maintenance contract um i'm can i make this okay <laughs> um i i move that we um accept the uh benefits package as um discussed earlier um with the bus drivers custodians and the maintenance people second george all those in favor six zero okay job share job Mexico. share um as you know job shares are uh, 
exists for one year, one year only, and the teachers are required, if they wish to continue with that job share, to um, submit a request to do so each year. Um, this year was the first year of um, fifth grade job share. Um, it's worked out very well. Um, both teachers um, would like to continue, as you can see in their, in their request, um, in the present position. I think they've learned an awful lot. Um, Nancy and I met with um, both of the teachers um, uh, last week to talk about professional development and some other pieces of this. Um, and I think we really get uh, more than our money's worth because many of them, quite often, they're there um, beyond the time that they're scheduled to teach. And the, t the students often have two teachers instead of one at the same time. So it's been, a, I think, a good experience uh, in the fifth grade. Okay. Do we have a motion to accept this? Job share position? Elaine? Oh, I move that we accept uh, the proposal for a job share position uh, in the fifth grade as existed this year. Okay, and second. second. Kathy, all those in favor? Six, zero. Um, proposal to authorize summer hiring. Every year at this time, we um, authorize that the superintendent and the administrators, the superintendent, hires during the summer for any positions that, that are vacant. You got to be careful. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, do, dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, do we have a motion to authorize summer hiring? George. I move that we authorize the superintendent to uh, move ahead. Um, and conduct summer hiring uh, in the absence of our regular meetings. Okay, and a second. Kathy? All those in favor? Six, zero. Okay, next we have consideration for the superintendent's contract. Um, George? Yeah, I would like to make a motion that we accept the adjustments uh, as were detailed earlier to the wages of our superintendent, Tom Pasella. Um, recognizing his outstanding performance overall and particularly an exceptional year of job performance this year inclusive of um, in, or included in this recommendation is a renewal of Dr. Pasello's contract um, for a three-year contract period. Okay. Do we have a second? Kathy. Um, I also have a comment that, that I would like to make. Um, the school board has just completed the review process for the superintendent, and it's clear from the performance appraisals um, that we have that we have a superintendent who is truly a leader in our school district. My intention is to not publicly embarrass Dr. Fasella. However, there are a few comments I would like to share that have been gathered in this review process from a random group of staff members in each of our schools and the district leadership team. The first being, we never even had a shared vision before. Dr. Fursella not only introduced the idea, he gathered input from all staff giving ownership to all of us instead of making it a mandated directive from the administrators. Dr. Fursella exudes optimism, warmth, and professionalism. He is supportive to staff, always ready to meet with teachers, and is a creative thinker and patient leader. One of Dr. Fursella's great assets in, in his visibility and accessibility to staff and community. Tom consistently recognizes and celebrates excellence in both staff and students. I have three more. Through Tom's leadership, Cape Elizabeth has become a dynamic, exciting place to work with great support and resources for professional growth. We trust him because he is effective, honest, amiable, and skillful. He brings a sense of humor, dedication, and persistence to the job. And I think that sums it up from everyone, um, the staff and the administrators. Now, can we take a vote? Okay. Um, all those in favor? 
six zero. Thank you. Uh, next on our list is the consideration of the business manager's contract. George. And in this instance, I would uh, move that we accept the adjustments as detailed earlier uh, to the wages of our business manager, Paulina Portria, again recognizing her outstanding performance um, overall and a particularly uh, good year of performance uh, this past year. Okay. Um, a second? Kathy? Comments? Just, we love Pauline. <laughs> we do, we do and, love and, Pauline. And she does a great, she does a great, she does a great job and we don't want anybody to steal her from us. Right. All right. Don't give them the idea. <laughs> All those in favor? Six, zero. She's okay. <laughs> okay, well that ends our meeting for tonight and we will follow this with executive session. Um, we have moved our school board workshop to next week. Um, June 17th, 7 o'clock in the high school library. Um, and that will be our last meeting until August. Um, so if we can have a motion to go out of public session, in, in, it will go into executive session. I move to that discuss we, a personnel issue, sorry. I move that we go out of public session into executive session to discuss a personnel issue. Okay, and second. George, all those in favor? Six, zero.